Okay, welcome. This is Google Summer of Code 2022. It's the Git Cache Maintenance Project, and it's the 14th of June. So Hrushikesh, I had notes on updating the project page details, and as far as I can tell, that is done and merged. Yeah. And did you, were your questions regarding UI, UI answered, or is there more to be discussed there? No, uh, Martin, yeah, actually, you know, uh, pull, uh, check the, uh, uh, you know, pull request which I've done, you know, can you download it and run it on your computer? Oh, do I apologize, I was working on a different topic on the Git plugin today, so I have not, but I certainly will. Okay. You want me to do that right now? Yeah, you know, so that we can go through what exactly I have done and how we can proceed forward. Super, hang on while I do that. I need to stash something. Hub slash. Okay, get plug in. All right, so let me show you my screen. All right, here we go. So, first, pull in all the copies. GHPR list, GHPR checkout 1277. Okay, and then you'd like to see it running. Yeah. And HPI colon run. Okay. Oops. Maven. Oh, fine. I have to bring up a different window. Just a minute, Rishikesh. There we go. Maven clean minus D Jenkins dot version equals 36 HPI colon run. Okay, here we go. And I didn't even bother to ask you what what is the minimum Jenkins version that is currently configured in the Palm file? I, okay, I, I forgot what version I was using. Something reasonably modern? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I didn't need to set it to 2.346, but it shouldn't do us any harm. Okay, compiling now. Okay, maybe not quite. Downloading another half of the internet and then compiling. <laughs> Let's make the terminal window bigger so that we can see it. Your internet is pretty fast. <laughs> Mine takes a lot of time to download. Yeah, well, and and it's sorry. That's that's one. Yeah, we're 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 in a competition right now in the area where I live um, to see if uh, the company that provides my internet currently can keep up with the local government that is bringing fiber to our homes. And so, yes, it should be fast because they're in a race and. If they lose the race, they lose money. So, oh, yeah. all right. So this is ready. And now if we go to local host, 8080 slash Jenkins, if I remember correctly, that will now give us a Jenkins that's running. Come on. There we go. Okay, so mm -hmm. if we do manage Jenkins, and just for fun, let's look at the installed version of the Git plugin. And it should tell us some snapshot version. Stop. Yes. Okay, good. So what would you like me to, In how where would you like me to travel? Can you scroll? Can you scroll up? There's the Git maintenance. The, uh, oh, very the, nice. Yeah. Okay. And, and this is the basic UI. So if you check that, uh, if you enter the cron syntax in the incorrect cron syntax, there's form validation as well, like a ba basic inbuilt. Uh, and then like that. 
Oh, good. Yeah. So it, um, it does the thing that Jenkins does yeah, and says, yeah. are you sure you mean that? And if you enter an incorrect wrong syntax as well, or, you know, it, it doesn't go no. Good. Okay. So if I do. So I can, I am also allowed to enter a value. Now, do the fields shrink based on screen width? They do. So even if we go very narrow, nice. Okay, very good. Let's see, so um, 99, 99. Oh, very good. So it, it, it won't even take 60 because that's not valid. And it won't take negative one, I bet. Nice. Very good. Okay. Now, I don't see any online help question mark here. So uh, yeah, that, that is one of the tasks, which it doesn't working. I tried adding that, but that isn't working. I don't know why. So okay. that was, yeah, so that was one problem I was facing. I was thinking Good. of this check checkbox kind of a thing, you know, where I if, if I take this only, then the maintenance task will run instead of like if we don't have this checkbox, then users won't have control. So I was thinking of adding a checkbox like this, and then you can even submit the you know, uh, uh, save yeah save it, and then it'll get printed in the terminal there. Ah, okay. So here's yeah, where it I, says, yeah. all right, here are the settings that were passed yeah here i'm not able to you know but whichever cron syntax is incorrect i'm not able to you know stop it from submitting the form that's something i was facing an issue in well but i i think that's that's also common for other jenkins forms okay. is is the 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 hints are only hints they're not barriers okay. so so if we say 59, 59, 59, 59, and that will say no, the, let's see, minutes, hours. So this one must be 23. No, line position seven. Okay, so minutes, or no, let's see, minutes, hours, Ah, I forget the syntax. So 59 minutes, 23 hours. Oh, no, is it seconds? No, no, it, it's minutes. It starts from minutes. minutes. Okay, minutes. so minutes, 23 hours, 59 minutes, and, and any... The v okay, yeah. Okay, so this says, hey, if you'd like to... See, and, and that is the correct recommendation all right now when i do and, but if i put an oh. invalid and now do a save it will so save, report. save you press and execute you press the execute button so oh even better okay so save here we go mm -hmm. and here it says whoops oh it says saving Oh, and I, I didn't have data in there. Okay, okay. 2359. Um, 59 is, an, oh, right, right, right. Let's be sure that's there. Yeah. That's better. Now, save. And, and then this will save. Yeah, yeah. But if you enter an incorrect one also, it gets submitted, so. Okay, and there it is. It yeah. says cron syntax invalid, which means when you're reading from the, when you're reading stored values from the disk, you have to be willing to, you, you can't crash when you see something invalid. Good, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, you're, it's not yet 
persisting to storage. No, it's storage. just no, no. It's just uh, send. I had a doubt. I asked it in the Gitter channel whether should I use go global configuration to store the data in XML files. But I didn't get a response, so I didn't continue with that. Mm, okay. Yeah, and I think uh, at least I think this should be global. I think really. Get maintenance task, you've put it at the right place, right here is a very reasonable place to do it. We may want to get you a different icon, but okay. that's that's a great icon for now. And and then now what happens if I give no value? Does it have a oh, default? Still, still I, I told you, I didn't do any, oh, I was thinking of having a default, but then uh, Rishabh was like, you know, we'll have, we'll test it on your computer or something like that. So then mm -hmm. I didn't work on that as well. And this and that's that's quite fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So, okay. So sh should I be using the global configuration class, which I have sent in the Gitter channel, you know, to store the data internally? I would think so. Um, I've, I, Let's let's take a look at the other code in the plugin and see how it does it. But I thought it was already using the global configuration class, and so that would make a reasonable thing to do. Okay, so Git plugin. Oh, my silly program. Okay, fine. Let's, I'm so used to running on Linux. I'm going to have to go switch to Linux for now. Just a minute. Okay, so now I wanted to see how it stores its configuration already. And so here we go, something that uses a global config value. Yeah, here we are, global.jelly. Okay. And it's using a field called global config name. So let's find global config name, it's in git scm. And what it's got is a descriptor implementation that's inside and it's using that. So I don't think it's using a, oh no, there it is. Okay. Ah, sorry, let's try this again. The descriptor is where? Okay, so get global config name and get global config email. Okay, so it's just using a descriptor. So I don't see any mention of anything global here, but now this is, I guess this is the problem that I've never, I've, I don't have experience taking the approach you've taken, but I prefer your approach. I think it's exactly the right thing to do. Um, so you've got the benefit that what you're doing is you've created a separate panel in here in the system configuration. So it's very clear to people what they're editing and they don't have to have the horrible, this experience is very fast 
they can see it immediately. Whereas if they click this one, they wait and they wait and they wait and they keep waiting and they're still waiting. And then finally, somewhere deep in the heart of this thing is a Git configuration page. Yeah. And so I like your technique much better. Um, and whatever technique, let's see, we've I what which things do I know that do this kind of thing? Implied labels is doing doing exactly the sort of thing you're doing. It has a, a panel here for the implied label and it then has an editing. So let's go do a quick look at the implied labels plug in and see how it does it. Now I have my inspiration was from code as configuration, you know, the same, uh, they have used the global configuration. So even and, I thought. Yeah, and be and it, I think that sounds great to me because if it's, if that's working for you, I am, I am fully, fully up with that. That's not, yes. I think that's wonderful. Um, I, I'd still want to take a look at global configuration just or implied implied labels just to see how it does it. Nope. Okay, so it doesn't have it doesn't have anything named global in it. Hmm, interesting. So how is it doing it? So implied labels plugin has a thing called config and a configure.jelly. So I think this and this are how they implement theirs. And the config class is a management link. Yeah. So is that what you're using yes. as a management link? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. good. Then then you're doing it the way the way the way that I think is best to do it so that we have a just like you did on the UI, we have a separate page. Where did it go? Nice separate page here for git maintenance and very fast user interface dedicated to exactly this thing. Very good. This is looking looking really great. Great, Fushikesh. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that, that that was about it. Uh, so I I think I'll proceed with global configuration. You know, to store the data internally in Jenkins. Okay. Uh, another thing I wanted to discuss was uh, about this UI. I was thinking of you know based on the Git version like Git version present on the system. You know those maintenance uh, like those fields only would be displayed. So assume if I have get two point two zero and only commit graph and incremental repack is supported, only those two fields would be displayed, and the other three wouldn't be displayed on the UI. That's very sophisticated. I like that because you can check the thing, the place we're doing the maintenance tasks is on the controller only. So it doesn't matter what Git version is on the agent. That's a good observation. You know the controller has this version, and if it's running some ancient version that can't do uh, maintenance tasks, you don't show that one. So yeah. now it, we should always be able to do garbage collection, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I think we can always do prefetch because the way it seemed to be described to me was that's something we could implement even without help from command line Git. Mm -hmm. But the others, commit graph, definitely, right? That is one that you have to have a certain, certain a more modern Git version. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was what I was thinking. So I wanted your opinion, like, should we, should I go ahead with that or not? I, I think so. I think that's a good choice. Okay. Uh yeah i think then i i think i'll proceed with that and uh, yeah uh, another doubt i had was you know if you go to the pull request on github there are there are a few tests which are failing and i i don't know why it's failing it's it's based on some java 17 or java 18 version which is you know 
Well, let's check and see. That may give us some interesting, interesting questions to ask because the tests are definitely passing on, on, um, on the primary branch, on the master branch. Oh, oh, right. I don't know. Fail to serialize. Hudson. Okay, so this would seem to indicate that you had changed a definition of something such that it can't be serialized at all. Um, let's take a look really briefly. So here we've got this one. I, I just changed the, you know, uh, Jenkins version in the POM file. So I don't know if that caused an issue. Um, it shouldn't. Oh, well, okay. I guess there, there are a couple of things we can, we can adjust here, but this, I don't think will, will actually break anything. So where is that Jenkins dot uh, Java dot level? Okay. We don't need that anymore. What exactly is this Java level? It's a, uh, it was a, a way of declaring which, what is the minimum Java version that the plugin supports. Okay. But that's already inferred by the version number of this parent palm. Okay. And so putting java.level was, was redundant, doesn't help. So now let's do that diff again, just to see. Okay, so here we see our, you've excluded error prone annotations. Source code encoding is fine, filing, okay. And I, I am not entirely sure why we need the encoding, but did you find there was a reason why it was required? Oh, I, I, did I add that? I didn't add that. I just added one line there, the Jenkins version. Um, not the, uh, I don't know about the encoding. Oh, well, okay. Well, so then let's, let's, let's make the change. So what you're saying is all you intended to change was Jenkins.version. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that then. And you wanted to add the exclusion for error? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Otherwise, it doesn't get in way. Like I'm not able to build it. So okay, good. Yeah, very good. So now let's do let's oh whoops. Yeah, we'll leave it as this for now. So uh, reduce diffs. Okay. All right, let's see if I broke something with the change I made. And are you okay if I push this to your branch so that- Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay. EI expose rep. Uh, yeah, right. there are some, uh, you know, uh, what you tell spot bug issues which I haven't fixed. I, I'll have to fix them. Well, and I like I like those to be fixed. Oops, because. Usually they're telling us something that is useful for us to know. This one, the warning that it's exposing internal implementation is I think probably accurate. And so you'll need to you'll need to do the make the change. Let's see. Oh, it's too late in the nighttime.
Okay, so it was 9.32. And it says this is returning internal. Oh, yes. And that's a modifiable map. So I'm not sure you want that. Okay. What, what prompted? Well, so, so for now, we're going to have to suppress it. Because otherwise it will fail, um, fail tests. It will fail the checks, but um, you certainly don't want long term to suppress it. And now, if you come as a, if you comment this or something, then there'll be other functions which would you know throw errors because it's dependent on this. So right. Basically, are you saying me do you like it should be an immutable map, right? I'm sorry. Ask your question again. Like basically, it should be an immutable map, right? Because this map can be modifiable. Well, the question, I guess, the question to you is: Do you, let's if we look at what the spot bugs warning is reporting. If I remember correctly, what what it says when it reports that is, let's see, EI exposed rep. Here we go. So let's read what they say. And my recollection is what they say is this class is exposing the internal representation to the uh, to callers and the danger of exposing internal representation to callers is they could do harm now so where is that here we go returning a reference to a mutable object value stored in a field exposes internal representation and so the danger here is you're going to, you, someone else could modify the object without using your interfaces. Yeah. Now, do you need a map? Do you, you, you need to show, return both keys and values, right? Uh, yeah, but I don't, I, I think it would, like if I, I, ex, I want to, I want to change the data, you know, data in the map inside that class only. So if I would return a immutable map, I think it would, you know, our people, you know, our elements outside that class can just use the data to read it, but not, you know, change it. If they have to okay. change it, they have to, yeah, they have to call a method in this class. And, and that makes sense. So that, so there is a way to, to moder to declare that I am returning an immutable map, right? Okay. So, yeah. so if you can do that, that sounds I, I, great. Yeah. I'll do that. All right. And so if I suppress that warning, it was. And now I need to go find the warning suppression import. Now, really, I know I've got at least one suppression in this code. Hmm. There we go. There it is, okay. And I'm doing something you should not do, right? Much better mm -hmm. if you would resolve the issue. I but for right so, yeah. now, we do it. That way we can, we can keep going and answer more questions. OK. All right, Let's see what the change looks like. Okay. Fix, fix me, don't ship with this, suppress, resolve the issue. Okay.
Now back to our Maven command. And we still haven't solved the thing that we originally were trying to answer, which is yeah. why does the test fail, right? Yeah. So now let's go look at that specific test and see if we still see it failing. I assume we will. Okay, so the test that's failing is test is get SCM test dot that. Okay, so. And, and that was on the specific Java version, right? Because oh, was it? So is it limited yeah, yeah, yeah. to Java 17? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only limited to Java 17. Okay, well, so let's do this. Let's prove that I don't see the failure on Java 11, and then I'll switch to Java 17 and watch it fail. That is most interesting. So Okay, so now I'm using Java 17. Okay, and I don't see the failure. Huh. Okay, so how has it failed repeatedly in that way, or was this a single time accident? No, it failed uh, like whenever I did, uh, you know, yeah, it kept failing for like three, four huh. times. Interesting. All right, so what might be going on here? Okay, so it's it's reporting a an unstable build on Java 17 and a failed build on Windows running Java 8. Okay, well, you know what? I'm going to push my change. You're okay if I push it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, this will let it get started now. And 15 or 20 minutes from now, we should be able to see the next run. 10 should already have started. Okay, good. Here it is. 10 is starting. All right. So what other questions do we need to answer while we wait for that to continue? Uh, other thing, uh, like I'm kind of new to testing. So the test I've, I've done test driven development, but I'm not sure how good are my tests. So if you, you know, go um like whenever you're free or something if you go like you review the tests which i've written so that you know uh, so that i can improve on whatever tests i've written or you know change the test with i'm not sure about that so okay yeah so let's let's take a look at the tests i just saw one pattern that i was okay no no equals method This, this actually looks quite good to me. Oh, oh, I bet I know why those file names are not working. I bet I, I have a guess why the help is not working. Uh, but why isn't it working? Because it chooses things based on field name and the field names you've got are are different than the file name that you're using okay so let's see it is for example whoops where is the okay incremental
Okay, there's the help for. Ah, incremental underscore repack. I don't know what does that. Okay, so you're using an enum here mm -hmm. for the type of the task, but then how will we? Okay, so where is the jelly? This must be it that does the, the prompt each, the yeah. user yeah the and so what it's loop. doing is you're going you're mm -hmm. iterating over each of the maintenance task types yeah interesting okay so in that case then i don't i think you won't be able to use the built-in um you won't be able to use the built-in association of help to fields uh -huh. because you're generating the fields dynamically okay interesting okay so so i think if you want the benefit of being able to just do a simply named file here mm -hmm. we may have to do some we may have to change this instead of using um an iterator over over each of the maintenance tasks you may have to call each one out individually. Oh, uh, I, I I didn't understand. So uh... Uh, let's let's see if we can try it here. Are you you okay? Is, is this interesting to you, or would you? Are there other things that you'd rather we be doing rather than this exploration of health? No, no, this is fine. This is fine with me. Okay, so let's try this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat and put something in as a i'm going to put junk in that will distract us i'm going to do a copy of this up here And instead of, so I'm going to call this mark weight fake div. Okay, we're inside the form. The title. And field cron syntax. Okay, so this is the association with where it should be writing, which is correct, right? Yeah. But then this, instead of my, wouldn't it be it? Uh, uh, my, my, uh, I've read the documentation and it was written as my. Oh, okay, good. So then yeah. we stay with my. Okay, good. Now, where is. So where is the name of the field? It's this thing, right? Is the entry. All right, so. F colon entry field equals. All right, so that was the syntax. Field equals cron syntax. No, how do we do this then? Because if we look at this one, how is it providing the help? The, uh, there was other way of adding the help uh, thing by you know adding a help you know attribute to that tag but mm -hmm. it seems uh, that is not the best practice kind of a thing so right I, and yeah. and and here it is so here's the 
So you see here is push only if success for the field. And then this thing, push only if success dot HTML. Actually, let's try this. Maybe it's enough for us, whoops. What if we create a file named help dash Bron syntax .html. Had you already tried that? I tried something like that, but it didn't come. I, you can try it again. Cron syntax help in very large letters. Okay, and if I remember, I always separate it with it, surround it with a div. Okay, is the dev one necessary or something? Uh, my understanding is it's required. Okay. Now, but I could be wrong, so don't don't. I'm very because often I must wrong. have forgotten you know, to add that dev. Yeah, and and I don't think that's why it's not not appearing. So let's let's try this just to see. How would I do this? I need to get that change onto a place where I'm actually doing work because right now I'm looking at it on my Linux computer and that doesn't help us at all. Let's go back here. So we need a file named help cron syntax in that location. Source main resources, Jenkins, plugins, git, maintenance. All right. Now here we have help commit graph. And we're going to write a new file named help-cron syntax okay so now back to where we were because somewhere here we have a jenkins running that we want to interrupt and start again Yes, terminate the batch job. Okay. Now open up our web browser. Manage Jenkins, Git maintenance, still no help. It was a nice thought. Okay, needs more investigation, needs more exploring. Yeah, I I, I, I tried that also. I, I, even, I didn't get it. I thought I was doing something wrong, so that's why. Yeah, and, and but we do see the index.jelly, right? Because yeah. that file is working. Yes. So if I were to do something like, since we're right here, let's just try an experiment. We're inside yeah, the form. See... Okay. Go ahead. I, I don't see that entry which you have done in this file. So is it the reason why it doesn't come? Uh, I I undid the the change. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, so this file is unmodified. Actually, let's make the change in a place where we can see it live. Let's do it here. Okay, so I think we should insert a new div inside the form.
Okay, and now we want an entry. And the thing we want is title equals very scary. And the field equals constant. Like that, right? So then we end the entry. Okay, now if that worked, when I reload that page in my web browser, there is very scary. But no more. Yeah. But no hell. Oh, because it's got no right. Because it doesn't have a text box. Okay. Right. I need to give it some place to write data. All I did was title the thing. But now the problem here is. I, I think we can remove the name, check URL and check method and, you know. Just right. Some... Well, and, and I think, isn't it that is isn't this field here no help because what i've got is a title but there's nowhere to store it the thing that does the story storing is in the text box that asks for the data and so if i take this off now why Okay, now wait a second. Oh, oh, no, no, no. This field must be necessary because that's how. That's how it knows what should be associated with the text box. And the text box doesn't have its own field value. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, well, let's see what happens. That's why we can experiment here together. Okay, so reload. There's the field. And it's doing no validation where this one is doing validation so that disabling the validation really did have the effect that you expected. Why is it not? Uh, help equals help dash cron. Let's try it again just to see. Okay. There's there's the very scary. Yeah. Help for help for feature very scary. That's not very helpful though. Uh, did you add the help attribute to that? I did. Yes. Okay. But but it's you you need to pass the path, I guess. Oh, uh, you know, to the as a value. Ah, ah, okay. So you're thinking that that it's it's not enough just to have made it entirely local i need to say because what i got there was a help icon but it doesn't have the right text that's why right okay so see if i can find somebody ah my search function is broken shame on me just a moment let's get a real get session. Okay. Okay, and I don't have it in this one, so. That's not very helpful. 
I don't know what it's searching that's so large, but. Uh, a help equal to, or would it be a dash? Or... Uh, what I was looking for was something in a jelly file that specifically calls out. What I don't understand is why this is so slow. Because okay, it's very yeah. fast that way. Uh, I have a few other questions. There we go. So, F yes. entry help equals, and you're right, it really does use full path name. Yeah. And here it's putting it in source main web app. That's a really strange place to put it. But let's try it. Experiment. We'll throw it away. It's part of this game. Okay, so. And it was called index. It was called help dash. Clone syntax. Okay, so if we do. Let's just assume, since it's source main, what do you think we could do? Could we safely assume be, this is it? Uh, and I think it should be plugins. Oh, get, oh, right, right. Plugins Good point. get, yeah. That makes sense. Okay, let's try that. So here, the idea is do that, right? Yeah, I see. Um, I, yeah. Oops. Thank you. Okay. So if we were lucky, no, that is not what I wanted. We want this. We'll refresh this page. Error, failed to load help file, not found. Okay, so I didn't get it right that time. Let's make some more guesses. I'm going to guess Jenkins. Actually, I'm going to guess that I may need to recompile because I'm adding a new file, aren't I? Okay, yeah. So it may not be good enough to just reload. Oh. You know what else we could do is we could look at the package jar file and see where it puts it. Because that's how it's looking, how it's finding it is inside the file or the, in the packaged HPI file. Okay, so here we are again. Nope, failed to load help file, not found. Okay, back to our earlier experiment. Experiment. So we've got the icon. What we <laughs> lack is the yeah. online help. But I think I think that's the right track. It just needs more experimenting to find it. Yeah. 
Sorry that it's taking me so long here, Hushikesh. I can do some investigation later, or you you may be better suited to do the investigation on your own because. I Okay, I've tried uh, all kinds of ways, but I haven't found anything. That's why. You know. Ah, okay. Well, then let's not let's not squander more of your time yeah. on help. Let's let let me take it up and see if I can find a way to to get that answer so that we've got help for it. Okay, and a few other questions. You know, uh, like one minute, my laptop charging. Yeah. A uh, few another question. Uh, you know, it's very difficult for me to get to know when exactly which maintenance command has been released in the, you know, in which Git version. It's 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 very hard for me. I've tried going through that Git, you know, uh, repository, the official repository, to try finding it, but I haven't found in which version was which, like you know, which maintenance task has been released. You know, for mm -hmm. the legacy Git. So you do you have like any idea about that? I, I I've got a way. I think that we could we could discover it empirically. We could discover it by an experiment. Let's here's here's my idea. If you're willing to just use what the infrastructure I've already got. So I've got a Jenkins controller here that has a bunch of agents of various types. FreeBSD, CentOS, et cetera. And okay. what we could do is on each of them, we could do git maintenance minus minus help. Okay. And see what does it tell us? And then we 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 use try that and let's let's see which ones offer. If we do git maintenance help, you'd think it would probably list the tasks, wouldn't it? Yeah. So let me let's try creating a job really quickly. Uh, git so maintenance. I'm gonna, if if it's below two point three zero version, there's no git maintenance itself. So you even to better. It, it will fail very very bluntly. Then right, it'll it'll just yes. crash and say, "Sorry, I don't know how to do that." So let's let's do the following. Let's create a new job called get get maintenance maintenance help does that seem okay and yeah. then what we're going to do is we're going to copy this other job get tools that happens to do this already for me and now instead of doing this i'm going to borrow get Get maintenance help. Okay, so this is where I'll do a quick change to a re separate repository and let's talk about how we do that. So here. All right, so I was doing get tools. And the, the command that I said that I wanted to name it was. Get, 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 get maintenance. maintenance help. Okay. So. Me and my fat fingers at 11 p.m. Okay. All right. So this says any agent, let's say any agent at all, it's going to iterate over each of them, get maintenance. Let's do that. Okay, we and we don't even need to do a checkout SCM, do we? We just say git minus minus version. Git maintenance 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 
minus minus help. Yeah. Right? That yeah. should be good enough. And that's the sh one. And then here we say get minus minus version, get maintenance, minus minus help. We think that will work, right? Yeah. Okay, let's try it. Add a uh, report, get maintenance, help. Okay, but now let's run the get, job. But we would get to know uh, like on uh, whether that version supports Git maintenance or not, right? But uh, uh, Git maintenance was released in 2.30 version. But uh, the thing here I wanted to know is like in which version was, you know, commit graph released, you know, which version was, uh, you know, GC released. So but that, what, know, wouldn't, we, wouldn't we see that by looking at the Git maintenance help? for that specific version. So let's 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 test that. Here is let's find a machine that has a so git maintenance minus minus help and what it does is it lists the tasks here. But and so version this is... version has 1 2 3 4 5 6 tasks. Yeah. So my thought was if we do get get minus minus version and get maintenance minus minus help, mm -hmm. it will tell us if if that if that version first it will fail if get maintenance minus minus help fails because there's no get maintenance command. Mm -hmm. We know oh that version doesn't have it. And because we output the version number, we then mm -hmm. can remember, oh, this was the version. Does, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But then how, how would I know like which version? No, so basically what was the, uh, you know, whole point of asking this question was because now uh, if I have to implement get maintenance for legacy systems, uh, you know, I need to know which version it was introduced so that from that version to, you know, the latest version, like below 2.30, I can run this command. That was the whole idea behind it. Okay, I'm not sure I'm understanding. So, so you what I think what you want is you want to generate a list that says for this command line git version, it has these git maintenance these, commands, yeah, right? Yeah. And so what I was trying to do here was looking at the actual distributions that we've got, I've got installed, we mm -hmm. could very quickly assemble a subset of that list at least by mm -hmm. by doing this to see what how, how the git maintenance commands are distributed which git, git maintenance commands are available on which git versions so do you okay if i try this just for a minute and then we'll, we'll we'll we can give up quickly if it doesn't work out yeah sure sure So build now. Okay, now it's building on several. And let's watch what its command line does. Git version, git maintenance, minus minus help. Okay, so here it is. It gives us the git version is 2.30.2. And it has the following commands, commit graph, prefetch, GC. So I think it did what I was hoping it would do. And then, all right, here's one where it failed. Here are several where it failed. Let's pick one that failed and see what the failure tells us. And what the failure will tell us is it was running get version 2.17 and get maintenance is not a command. 
Yeah, I, now I wanted to know, like, in this Git version, like, what maintenance commands would be supported? Like, would a GC be supported in this, or would a you know commit graph be supported in this? That is what is my question. So, so couldn't we take a variant of that then and say, let's so let's do the same thing and say instead. Which things do we think should be supported, like Git GC? Yeah, uh, yeah. And now you said uh, Git you th commit graph mm -hmm. is a yeah. separate command. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. then then we can do the same thing, and say. And now if we were really sophisticated, we would replace on the shell at least the semicolons with ampersands and say on the first failure, stop. So what we'll see is it will say, it will report the version. It will see if it can give help for GC, help for commit graph, and then it will try to give help for maintenance. Okay. Now I don't remember how to do that for for Windows, so we're stuck with Windows. I'll just we'll just have to put up with that. Stop on first failure. Okay, so if we look in our friendly local blue ocean, and what we see is Debian on its environment says, here's the help for GC. Here's the help for commit graph. Mm. And let's prove it. This one is what Git version. It is 2.30. So it was predictably a good, a good one. Now, if we go to one of the failures, Edamame, I think this one's running Ubuntu 18. And its Git version is 2.17. And it has GC but it does not have commit graph. Okay. So now that's, so that would, I think that may suggest we ought to give you access to my environment so that you could run these kind of tests yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, if, are you willing to do that? Do you mind using my equipment? You'd yeah, have to yeah, sure. Sure. SSH into the system, and, but then you can create your own jobs and run them. Yeah, uh, that's, that's fine with me. I can do that. Okay, so if you're willing to send me by email a public key. Okay. So an SSH public key, and usually it's it could be RSA, it could be ED25519. Okay. Uh, it could be um, ECDSA if you prefer those. Just, just email me a public key, not the private key. I don't want the private key. That's secure and you keep that. But send me a public key and I'll give you an account. Oh, and what username you would like. Oh, a Rishi 20 would do. Yeah, you send that in the email. I'm yeah, unfortunately sure. not able to remember that. Sure, sure, sure. I'll, I'll send it by email. Great. Oh, on, 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 uh, finally, uh, uh, a few last, uh, like, you know, not in much of your time. I know it's 11 in the, you know, night. Go ahead. Uh, uh, as, as are Saturdays and Sundays, like, do you work on Saturdays and Sundays? Because I, you know, I send a message and then I keep waiting the entire time, you know, because I'm stuck. And then there was like, you know, no message because I was free during that time. And then I, you know, uh, I couldn't get any work done so if, if saturday and sunday is like are you if you're on leave then i wouldn't 
put a message in the group so that you know I don't understand. don't be shy about putting those messages last week i was unavailable on saturday and sunday because i had just returned from a business trip most okay. times i'm online at least sometime during the day saturday uh less likely on sunday but still frequently on sunday as well okay now so, and remembering that i'm 12 hours what is it am i 12 hours ahead of you or 12 hours behind behind, behind, behind. i'm 12 hours behind you right because yeah, you're yeah. on the other side of the you're on the high side of the international date light i'm on the low side of no, the international okay. date light yeah so uh that's what i wanted to ask because you know i was uh worried like what do i do so i couldn't get anything done that time so yeah i and my apologies for that i i am sincerely sorry that these first two weeks the most crucial crucial and important period called community bonding i was off on business trips and on personal vacation so let's let's do our best to fix that by meeting more frequently and being sure that we get i get you the information you need if if it will help you we could meet two times a week we can meet i'm even open to meeting on weekends if that helps you oh okay if, if there's anything like that I'll, I'll let you know great yeah so this week's agenda would be to stay save all the you know data which the administrator enters into the you know configuration files that was what uh, would be the agenda and i would i think i'll start working on you know scheduling maintenance tasks initially for uh, get versions greater than 2.30 excellent i think that sounds great that gives us something for experiments very quickly and and it means you're already actively working on some of the largest and most interesting objects in the system so the, you're actually getting real work and we're you've got we've got a, a rudimentary UI and the UI is good enough to allow us to do things that you can switch focus to the to the the logic behind it. Yeah. Great. Anything else, Rushikesh? That that's it from my side. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and stop. I will try to upload this recording tomorrow. I need to go to bed now. So sure. thanks very much. And and it's a pleasure working with you. Same with you, Mike. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.